Hello there, my name's Gary Sims from Andrew Authority. Now, uh, benchmark cheating has come up again in the news. This time it was OnePlus that have been accused of cheating the benchmark scores on the OnePlus 3T. They're not the first company to ever be accused of benchmark cheating. So the question is, why do OEMs try to cheat on the benchmarks and how do they do it? Well, let me explain. So first a bit about the types of people that buy smartphones. I suppose broadly speaking, there are three groups of people that buy smartphones. The first group of person doesn't really care much about the specifications or the speed. They'll go into the shop to buy the phone, they'll ask the sales assistant, they'll say, yeah, it's a good phone, they like the price, they'll buy it, that's the end of the transaction, done deal. The second category of person are those that have a bit of technology uh, understanding. They might understand what the specs mean, they'll understand the difference between four gigabytes of RAM and two gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, 32 gigabytes of internal storage. They might understand screen resolutions, that kind of thing, and they'll make an educated uh, decision based on what they understand about each of the phones. They may also have read some stuff on, on the internet. But it isn't their area of expertise, but they know enough about technology to make an educated purchase. And then I suppose the third category of person is the one that is basically the geek, the nerd, that knows everything about smartphones, reads all the reviews, watches all the videos, uh, knows what's coming down the pipeline, knows what was the best phones, and things like that. They're the kind of person that you... Yes? Hi, oh hi, yeah. Now, I'm making a making a video. Okay, be quick. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's a good phone. It's a good phone. What's the price? Oh, excellent price. Yes, great. Off contract. Brilliant. Okay, but right, I've got to go. Okay, thank you. Bye, 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 bye. Sorry about that. So they're the kind of person that you ring when you want to know what is a good phone to buy. So the question is, how do OEMs actually cheat? Well, what actually happens is when a uh, device is made, there is a balance has to be struck between performance and power usage. Now really these two are enemies, they're at loggerheads with each other. Let me give an example, on your desktop you've probably got a, an Intel or an AMD CPU, it's maybe giving out between 50, 100 maybe more watts of thermal uh, air heat, it is uh, got big heat sink on it, it's got cooling fans, of course it's running from the mains electricity. Now of course smartphones are at the other end of that scale, they are run by batteries, they mustn't get too hot, they've got no uh, fans on them. And basically, the more performance that you want to get from a mobile device, the more heat it produces and the more battery life it uses. So there's a balance between getting good battery life and getting um, a good performance. Now, when the device makers make a device, they make various decisions in the hardware, like the processor and the clock speed of the processor and the clock speed of the GPU and, and other things like that. And they also make uh, some decisions in the software. Now, the software can, of course, be tweaked dynamically. While you're using the phone, the phone is actually always changing the speed of the CPU, the speed of the GPU, it's throttling, it's increasing. There's a whole technology here, which I've covered in some of my other videos. Now, every app that runs has a unique ID, and those unique IDs are part of the uh, information that's put on the Google Play Store. And so the UID, the unique ID of every app remains the same. So Antutu has the same UID today and tomorrow, and it had it last year. And basically, it's not very hard for an OEM to put into its firmware something that detects when a particular app is running. And if it is running, it can tweak the software to say, hey, let's boost the CPU artificially during these few next few minutes. Let's boost the GPU. Now, it's not the normal circumstances that the phone would use because if it ran at that speed the whole time, the battery would go flat very quickly. The phone would heat up very quickly. But for a 90-second test, for a two-minute test, it's not going to make any long-term difference. And so the way they're cheating is basically when they see Antutu running or Geekbench running or some of the other popular ones, Basically, the firmware says, hey, let's push up the CPU, let's push up the GPU, and then it gives out different results than it would be if it was using its normal settings, its normal performance settings for when it's running uh, normal programs. Now, of course, there is this question. I'll throw it out there. I'll say from the beginning, I think it is cheating, but let me just ask you, is it really cheating? Because actually, it's not like the firmware has somehow managed to send uh, messages or inject data into the benchmark and actually get it to display a false score. That was the score that that device 
produced. That is what that device is capable of doing. But it's not what the device does day to day because to reach that capability, it actually has to um, run the CPU much harder than it would under normal circumstances. But let me look at it this way. What about the speed things for cars? It will do naught to 60 in you know, four seconds or something like that. Well, how many people actually pull away from traffic lights to go naught to 60 in four seconds? Well, you don't, it's just too dangerous. It's, it's not what you do. But actually people will say, wow, look, that's the speed of that car. So, you know, there are artificial statistics that exist in all industries, and maybe the benchmarks are an artificial statistic in this way. And in fact, they are artificial in the sense they don't really reflect the workload that a normal app does. I mean, even playing quite complicated games doesn't actually reflect what you get in the benchmarks. I've done some other articles about this that shows you how the benchmarks use the CPU and GPU, the graphs that are produced, and they're very different to what you get under normal games. So benchmarks are artificial to start with. So if the smartphone is using them artificially, well, is that really a big issue? I guess it is. I say it is cheating because people expect the phone to run that fast in normal usage and it doesn't. But it's an interesting question. I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And so there you have it, the OEMs are cheating on the benchmarks. Now, this is not the only industry this is happening. It's happening in the car industry. We've seen that with emissions. We've seen that with fuel consumption figures. This is gonna happen in all industries because it's so cutthroat that people, the OEMs are trying so hard to get ahead so that their product sells the most. Doesn't mean it's right, but I'm just saying it's a reality. My name is Gary Sims from Android Authority and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Uh, please tell me in the comments below what you think about OEMs cheating on benchmarks. Download the Android Authority app and don't forget to go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.